The Carnegie Airborne Observatory is our project that we run out of the Carnegie Institution for Science. And what we do with the CAO is we uh, have an airborne laboratory that images Earth with very unique instruments. These instruments can, for example, study tropical forests in detail, uh, but they're also really good at studying and mapping coral reefs. Some of the instru instruments that we have on board allow us to see through the seawater to the seafloor itself and actually uh, understand where the live corals are, where the sand is, where the uh, algal cover is, sea grasses, and so forth. So we're able to make very detailed maps with this new technology we have on board. Our operations uh, from the air include morning and afternoon flights. We go out and we map the coral reefs uh, from the beach basically all the way out until we can't see anymore uh, into the water. And that's at about 15 meters depth. So from zero to 15 meters, we're mapping those corals. Meanwhile, our field collaborators are out on boats diving uh, and also measuring from the surface on the, from the boat the uh, actual conditions in the seawater column them itself and also the actual uh, habitat below. So after we collect the data, uh, we'll take it back to our lab. The lab is based in Palo Alto, California, that's near San Francisco. And in the lab, we have uh, data scientists, people that are specialists with working with these data on supercomputers. And they're able to process the data to make the first maps will be maps of where the corals are, also where other types of habitats are, like seagrass habitats and algal habitats. And those will be the first maps that will come out. And that might take a couple of months. And then we'll start to do research on the data a second time, looking to innovate. For example, where are the rare species? Uh, for example, the Elkhorn uh, corals. Those are very unique and important of particular interest. Uh, the Staghorn corals. So we'll be using the data uh, in multiple ways to try to find those special species out there. Grupo Punta Cana Foundation's effort in uh, coral nurseries, that's the process of growing corals and outplanting them as a part of the restoration effort and, and part of the effort to, to do better conservation, that's a, a really key part of the program here. What I've seen of the nurseries here, they're, they're world class, first of all. And uh, what we're offering is an ability to fuse or to couple these kinds of maps with the nursery program so that the managers and conservation scientists can figure out where to do the outplanting of the corals. What are the best habitats for actually taking those corals out of the nursery on land and putting them back in the sea? And that isn't uh, a, an easy question to answer. You have to kind of know about the, the marine habitat itself to make the decision on where to put them. And that's what this mapping is going to support. In the context of this sanctuary, Grupo Punta Cana uh, and the foundation will be able to use these maps to make more tactical decisions about, for example, where to allow uh, anchorages, where to allow moorings of boats, where to protect, what, what are the most pristine parts of the reef to, to really make sure are protected. Also how to work with fisheries and how to uh, manage the use of, of, uh, of the fishery in a more sustainable way. These maps of benthic habitat, that's what we call them, or coral reef cover, those are the maps that allow that very tactical management geographically. So the collaboration here is what brought us to the DR. It's Grupo Punta Cana's uh, efforts and interests, not only in managing their part of this coast, the part that they manage currently, but to extend their knowledge all the way around through the new marine sanctuary, coupled with, uh, with partners uh, based out of Bay eBay, like Fundamar, 
and then uh, yet other partners that are coming in like the Nature Conservancy to provide uh, scientific expertise to, to support the process of establishing and planning this new marine sanctuary. So that's really what brought me and my team in. Uh, having the backing of the Dominican Republic government is a key part as well. So kind of all the stars lined up for us to come in and do this mapping in a way that will really advance conservation in the region.